Hey guys, just to let you know, this lesson is in collaboration with Flip Academy, a free online platform for all of your GCSE, A-level, IB and CBSE revision out now on web at www.flip.academy and also as an app for Apple, iOS and Android. It really is better than all the other GCSE platforms out there. It covers all the topics in great depth and has an app that you can download your courses on and use offline. Hello, welcome to Flip Academy. Today we're going to be looking at the coordinate geometry section of the CIE A-level math specification. So uh, let's just get into it, shall we? So the first kind of question that we're going to, or the spec point that we're going to go through is, uh, we need to be able to find the equation of a straight line given sufficient information. So generally speaking, uh, sufficient information is, well, what do you need for the equation of a straight line? Well, the equation of a straight line is just y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and C is the y-intercept. So that is where the line intersects or crosses the y-axis. So they don't have to just give you the gradient and y-intercept, they have to just give you enough information. So for example, if you had two coordinates, you can always work out the gradient, and therefore you can work out the y-intercept afterwards. However, I picked a pretty challenging question from the 2018 paper one, and it gives us a kite and AC is a line of symmetry. So that's an important thing to remember about a kite, is that it is symmetrical, okay? And the coordinates of A and C are 0, 4, and 8, 0, respectively, and, Z and O is the origin. We need to find the equations of both AC and OB. So remember, OB is going to be a line that goes right through here. Now, uh, let's just start with AC, because I think it's probably the easier one to do. So if we just write AC here, okay? What information have we got? Well, we've got two coordinates. Perfect, so if we're going to do y equals mx plus c, we can quite easily work out m and c. So if we work out m first, the gradient is going to be the change in y over the change in x. So y ends up at 0, but it starts off at 4, so 0 minus 4. And x starts at 8, and it end, uh, sorry, ends at 8, and it starts off at 0. So that's going to be minus 4 over 8. So again, be careful of the signs which is minus a half. Now the y-intercept, you can just read from the graph, it's just 4. So the equation for AC is minus a half x plus 4. Okay, And keep in mind that since I had the um, gradient, essentially, right, they gave me enough information for the gradient, I could have subbed in one of the coordinates to work out what the y-intercept was, if I didn't already have it. So, now we have to look at OB, which is where things get slightly more challenging, but not too bad. Uh, first thing to note is that because this whole thing, the kite, is symmetrical, this is at right angles with line AC. So OB is perpendicular to AC. And what does that mean? Well, perpendicular lines have inverse reciprocal gradients. So well, that that's fancy talk for basically saying that the gradient is going to be the negative of 1 over the gradient. Okay, So that's going to be minus, minus 2, which is 2. Okay, So you might hear this called the negative reciprocal, or the inverse reciprocal, whatever you want to call it, it's all the same thing. But what you need to do is do minus 1 over the gradient to find the perpendicular gradient, and vice versa. So now we have that y equals 2x, and do we know what the y-intercept is? We do. It goes through the origin, so the y-intercept is actually 0. So we just have y equals 2x. That's a four-mark question. I only really did one calculation. We could say this is a calculation too. So we did two calculations, we got four marks. That's not bad. But I think the key thing to remember here is the whole um, perpendicular line here. So I think this first step is where students mostly are completely fine. So they get two marks, but the next two marks uh, evade them sometimes. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So the next point says we need to be able to interpret and use any of the forms y equals mx plus c, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So this is a formula for working out the equation of a line. And all you need to know is that x1 and y1 are just a set of coordinates, but they have to be the same coordinate, if that makes sense, right? So if I had another coordinate here, I can't mix and match. I can't use x from this and y from this, or y from this and x from this. It has to be the same pair. And x plus by plus c equals 0. So all three of those are just different forms of the equation of a straight line, all completely equivalent. However, I decided to pick a 
fairly tricky question yet again because I, uh, you know, want to talk to you guys from the 2016 paper this time. So, what we have here is that we need to find uh, values of the constant m with the line for, for which the line y equals mx is a tangent to the curve. So just so you guys are aware, what a tangent is, is this curve here, so if I draw this out, is 2x squared, so it's going to be probably something like this. That's horrible, but I hope you get the point. A tangent is going to touch the curve at one point. Hopefully I've made that a bit, given it away a bit. A few ways to do this, you can differentiate, but because we haven't gone on to differentiation yet, I'm going to ignore that. What we're going to do is equate the two expressions, okay? And the reason we can do that is at the point where they intersect, where any two graphs intersect, the x and y values are the same, right? So this coordinate here, where I put the line, x and y, so the coordinate, is the same for the curve and the straight line, right? And it doesn't matter what curve you have, what shape you have, what equation you have. If they are intersecting, you can always equate the y values and the x values. So in this case, I've equated y, and now x is the same. So what I'm going to do now is bring it all onto one side, because this is a quadratic that we can solve. So what I'm going to do is subtract... In fact, I'll do this in a couple of steps just so I can make it super, super clear, because I'm going to do some funky algebra in one second. Now what I'm going to do is because I want to solve this, I need to have, you know, A, B, C, right? The number in front of X squared, the number in front of X, and the number in front of, uh, at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorise out a minus, and I'm going to make this 4 plus M X. Okay? So essentially the thing in front of here, you could also have it as plus, and then make this minus, and also this minus, which... It's literally going to give you the same thing. It doesn't really make a difference, okay? Um, let's leave it like that for now, just to prove my point. Now, A is the number in front of x squared, B is the number on the end, and C is here. So now we need to think about solving this. Well, I can't really use the quadratic formula, because I have an unknown in it, which is, not, uh, which is no good. So, what else can I do? Well, how many times will this straight line, will a tangent, meet a curve? once. So what that means is that there should only be one solution to this equation. So what we're going to use is the fact that b squared minus 4ac should equal 0. So now what we have is we have minus 4 minus m squared e uh, minus um, 4ac equals 0. So let's expand this, this is going to be a bit interesting, minus 4 times minus 4 is 16. Um, then we have plus 4m, plus 4m, so we have plus 8m, plus m squared. And then we have 2 times 8 is 16, times 4 is 64, so minus 64, 0. And again, now this is just a quadratic equation, m squared plus 8m, and so... So, I just want to rewrite that just to make it a bit more clear. Am, and then 16 minus 64, well, 64 minus 16, let's have a think. It's going to be minus 6 would be 58, minus 10 would be 48. You can factorize or you can use quadratic formula. You can do whatever you want. Uh, let's just use a quadratic formula. Let's take it nice and easy. So we have minus. And then b is 8 minus b plus minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4a c oops 2a so we have an answer of either m equals 4 or m equals minus 12. So again, keep in mind, you could have you could have easily um, factorised that if you wanted to, right? Minus 1, 12. Either way you want to do it, completely fine. Okay, and if you look, it does say values, so with an s on the end, so we have two answers, that's completely fine, and that's how you would do that. So, 
this kind of question does come up somewhat frequently. Every couple of years they shuck it in, so it might be a good uh, one to kind of have it in your back pocket. Part B, so this is the kind of classic, a line passes through two coordinates, find an equation for L. So let's draw a little diagram to help us out here. So that's 2, 1, according to me. And 4 minus 5 would be, let's say, down here, right? So we have a line going like this. So again, we're going to, we can either use y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So that might be a good one for us to do because we've already used the other formula. Okay, And it also doesn't specify, right? Which means we can use whatever equation we want. We can leave it in this form if we, love, if we would like. But m, we need to find the change in y over the change in x. So minus 5 minus 1 over 4 minus 2. So that equals minus 6 over 2. So now we have y. Uh, let's pick this as my y1 and y2. Doesn't actually matter. X minus and that is actually a valid expression. However, if you want to be a bit uh, cleaner, you can, whoops, you can leave it in the form y equals mx plus c. If they specify it, if not, then honestly, I wouldn't bother, but that's just me. So y is equal to minus 3x plus 7. Not too shabby, I think. Now we have the equation of a circle. So this can be kind of a tricky concept. It's a bit tricky in um, GCSE as well. But let's go through exactly how you would do this. So a circle, first of all, let's look here. Right, this is the equation of a circle. We have x and then some number squared plus y, some number squared is equal to the radius squared. So what some people do here is they try and like match it up. So x and minus 2x and y and plus 6, right? So they'll say that the center, this is what they might say. They might say the center is 2 and like minus 6, right? And then they'll say the radius is whatever the square root of 26 is. Both of these are wrong. Because if you look, it's not in this form. Okay, so now we need to talk about how you actually get that form. So we have an equation that looks something like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the x's together. And I'm going to write the y's together. I think that would be a wise move. <laughs> anyway. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to do uh, completing the square, okay? So, hopefully you remember the completing the square formula. This will give me x minus 1 squared minus 1 squared. And then we can do the y. y plus 3 squared minus 3 squared equals 26. And now what we're going to do is expand those brackets, not the, obviously not the, x brackets, we're going to expand the numerical ones. So 1 squared is 1 minus, all good, 3 squared, minus 9 equals 26. And now I'm going to add it all onto the other side. So now we have x minus 1 squared plus y plus 3 squared. And then add 9, we'll make that 35. Add another 1, we'll give that, give that, make that 36. Okay. Now if I compare that to, to this, I have x and a number plus y and a number equals r squared, which means I'm correct. So for part i, the center, all you need to do is flip the sign of whatever's inside the bracket. So the x coordinate is plus 1 instead of minus 1, and the y coordinate is minus 3 instead of plus 3. And then part 2, all you need to do is take the square root of 36, and because it's a radius, and radii have to be positive, because you can't have a negative radius circle, it's just going to be the positive version, which is 6. And that's how you do that, okay? So that's what it means by using algebraic methods and things like that. Don't just jump straight to this. And generally speaking, the number of marks won't be too many. So don't let that fool you. Okay, and here is a, another one. So the centre circle C has centre this and passed through the point. So how do we do this? Well... We know what the center is, so let's actually add that in. So once again, I'm just going to write out the equation of a circle. Hopefully, you know, I'm kind of trying to brainwash you here. I just want you to definitely remember this, at least at the end. Now, what we know is that the, we know the 
center, right? So a is going to be minus two and b is going to be minus five because again, we have to flip the sign. So we have x minus two squared plus y minus five squared equals r squared and we have a coordinate. Cool. So we have three unknowns, but two of them we can actually solve because x equals four in this case and y is equal to nine. So let's sub those in. We have four minus two squared plus nine minus five squared equals r squared. So we have four minus two is two squared is four. Nine minus five is four squared is 16 equals r squared. So r squared equals 20. So here some people might say that, oh, okay, then r equals square root 20. It's actually not necessary because we're looking for r squared, not r. So you don't need to actually worry about that. So x minus two squared plus y minus five squared equals r squared, which is 20. So that's how you would do something along those lines. The next thing you need to do is understand the relationship between a graph and its associated algebraic equation and use the relationship between points of intersection of graphs and solutions of equation. Basically, you should understand that when two lines or curves or whatever intersect, it means that both of the x and y values are the same. Okay, so what you can do there is you can equate them if they're both y equals or you can substitute them in uh, similar to a kind of quadratic um, simultaneous equation, if you like. So we've actually kind of done this question before, right? It's a tangent and that means it has one solution and blah, 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 blah. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say that y for this line is equal to a quarter. And because it's gonna, we're gonna expand it. And now we can sub that into here. So we have let's say x over 4 plus c over 4 squared equals x plus 3. So now here comes something that's probably not very fun. <laughs> we need to expand these brackets. So we have x squared. So let's call it 1 over 16 x squared. And then we're going to have... Okay, this is going to get a bit tricky. We're going to have xc over 16 plus xc over 16, which is going to be xc over 8. <laughs> right? Okay, e and then, whoops, whoa, careful, careful, okay, and then plus c squared over 16 equals x plus 3. Now, what we can do here is we can actually work with this, right? The b squared minus 4ac, we can use it with fractions, it's no harm. But if you'd like, you can times through by 16. And that will allow you to, it, it will look nicer. That's literally it. So I'm gonna do it just because I assume that a few of you might want that. So we can have x squared plus two cx is actually the better way to put it, plus c squared equals uh, 16x plus 48. But this is completely unnecessary, okay? You don't need to actually do that. And let's uh, go back up, let's put that in half. Move everything over to the left-hand side, so we're going to have x squared plus, and then we're going to have 2c minus 16x, um, and then plus c squared minus 48. And again, we can use b squared minus 4ac equals zero, or you can also keep this as b squared equals 4ac, uh, is another way you might have seen it written, so we can then have 2c minus 16 squared equals 4, 1, and then don't forget c is c squared minus 40a. Okay, and here you can use, you can start using calculators, it's completely fine. Um, 4c squared um, minus 32 minus 32 is minus 64c, and then plus, you know what, I draw the line when it gets to the 16 times tables. Let's do 16 multiplied by 16, 256, 56 equals 4c squared, and then that would be 198. Just to quickly check that before I make a fool of myself. Oh, 192, never mind. Uh, minus 192. Move. We could actually divide the whole thing by 4 now. 
which I'm going to do because... And then also we can actually cancel out these two things. So divide by 4, so half, that would be minus 16c, 128, and then 64. Um, and that would be obviously 48 again. <laughs> 8, move that over to the other side, so minus 16c equals, um, I'm pretty sure... C equals 1, wow. <laughs> And again, it said value singular this time, so it's a good thing that these C squared cancelled out. <sighs> okay. And the last question, you know, end with a bang, multi-part, super long. Actually, it's not that long, to be honest. Uh, question. So we have line L1 has gradient 3 and passes through minus 2, 5. Find an equation of L1. Okay, cool. So with this one, we have M. So we have Y equals 3X plus C. And now, we have a coordinate, so we can sub that in to find what c is, because x is equal to minus 2 in this case, and y is equal to 5. So we have 5 equals 3 times minus 2 plus c, so 5 equals minus 6 plus c, c is equal to 11. So our final answer is going to be y is equal to 3x plus 11. Nice and quick. Part B, L2 is perpendicular to L1 and passes through 0, 4. Well, if it's perpendicular, the gradient is the negative reciprocal. So minus 1 over the gradient, which is 3, so negative 1 over 3. So now our equation has become y equals minus a third x plus c. And once again, it passes through 0, 4. So in this case, x is 0, y is 4. Can you see how just quick this can be? We have 4 equals 0, so c, and then we're done. So now we just have y is equal to minus a third x plus 4. Easy peasy, those two more questions, firing them off nice and quick. So we have the equation, and then it says find the coordinates of the point where L1 and L2 intersect. So remember, when two lines cross, or curves, or whatever arbitrary shape you have, their coordinates are the same, so we can equate their y's and their x's technically. So what we can do is we can just set this y equal to this y. So we just have 3x, first I'll write that, 3x plus 11 equals minus a third x plus 4. Um, now we have a few options. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to times everything by 3 because fractions scare me. So 9x plus 33 equals minus x plus 12. x on the left and the numbers on the right, so we have 10x, and then we're going to minus 33, so 12 minus 33 would be negative 21. So then x is equal to minus 2.1. Now we sub that in to find our value for y. It doesn't matter what equation we sub it into, so let's just say that y equals, we're going to sub it into the 3x equation. And we're done. So what we're going to do here is we have 3 times 2.1, negative 2.1, I knew that, plus 11, which gives me 4.7. So my coordinates are minus 2.1 and 4.7. And that brings us to the end of the coordinate geometry section.